Thanks for watching Diceborn. If you're interested in diving deeper into the political intrigues and mysteries of our series, there's a handy reference sheet with character descriptions and family trees in the video description, along with links to other bonus content. For more behind the scenes extras, consider supporting us on Patreon. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Dice Born Secrets in Stained Glass. This is the second episode of our Era 1 Mistborn Adventure Game miniseries from here's here at the 17th Shard. Um, this is our second episode, so if you haven't seen the first, go back and watch the first, or you're going to be very confused. Um, <laughs> it's very good, we do recommend it. Um, so for this episode, I'm Ben, and I'm playing Lucius Lacal, and I'm joined by Veronica. Hello, I am playing Elian Venture. And Robert Ian. Hello, I am playing Sylvain Hadriel. Alex. Hello, I am playing Dier Venture. Eric. I'm playing Jenna Tekiel. And we're joined as well by the narrator and GM for this little series, her Matt. Hey, I play a lot of people and excited <laughs> yeah, for day do. two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this series was built in collaboration with Crafty Games, where we're using some of the content of their upcoming Golden Mandate supplement. You can find out more about that. Uh, go back and watch the intro of the first episode, or we'll just mention when we're using that stuff. Um, Golden Mandate should hopefully be coming out this summer. Um, for today's giveaway, I'm going to hand us over to Giveaway Ben. What's up, guys? It's me, Giveaway Ben, back at it again with uh, Bridge 4 behind me. And I'm going to give you some giveaways. I'm going to give you some giveaway winners. And I'm going to give you some giveaways, prizes as well. Um, so we're going to do that. First one, I'm going to talk about the Crafty Games giveaway. If you don't remember, this is the giveaway where you leave a comment and be a subscriber to our channel. And um, uh, you have the chance to win either a set of Alimantic dice or ferrochemical dice um, from Crafty Games. Thank you to Crafty Games for this giveaway. The winner of last week was Sophie Hughley. I think I'm saying that's right. Uh, she's excited for the return of Diceborn, and I'm hoping that she has finished the episode by now um, so that she can watch this one and find out that she's won. I mean, I'm also going to send her a message on YouTube. So, Anyway, um, a couple of reminders for that one. That one is a US-only giveaway, so if you don't live in the US, just, just let me know when I email you, and we'll I'll, we'll sort something else out. Okay, cool. Um, so for the Shire Post Mint giveaway, this is the giveaway where you need to subscribe to the newsletter for Shire Post Mint, um, to win some Era One Mistborn coins. Um, the Shire Post Mint Mint can make cool coins. A bunch of fantasy series. They have some Era One coins, and they've got some Era Two coins as well. And I think they've just come up with a new set. Uh, we'll just call cool coins. Um, to yeah. Like I said, to win this one, all you need to do is subscribe to their newsletter, which is linked in the description down below. Um, and in uh, next week, we'll just pull a random person who subscribed, because that link is unique to us. Um, we'll just pull a random person who subscribed, and we'll email them to say, hey, you've won, and the, the person who won this week was a guy named Josh. I only have your first name. Um, so, Josh, well done for winning the Shire Post Mint. I think you should have already received a email from Helen at Shire Post Mint, and um, asking you to give them just confirm some information so go do that um so well done to you two for winning and leave a comment down below and be a subscriber to for your chance to win the dice for this week and then just subscribe to the newsletter for a chance to um win some coins for the next week and i'll see you next episode bye thank you giveaway ben um so without much further ado matt would you like to get us started on the second episode of secrets in stained glass Absolutely. I'm uh, very hyped. Um, so for those of you who don't know in our audience, we're recording these back, uh, the first two episodes at least back to back. So it's, uh, mm. we're all pretty jazzed about this. Yeah. D day <laughs> but, by day. We haven't just stopped doing four hours of recording. <laughs> and, yeah. And then jumped into this. Go. The whole weekend though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. background has become lighter since the end of the last episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's, there's been some costume changes as well. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Um, 
So last time on Dice Born, Secrets and Stained Glass, we uh, learned about our setting, a party hosted by the Illarial family at their lakeside estate. Um, we learned that this party is very important because it's the first one in several years on account of a fire two years back that destroyed the entire um, previous manor that existed there and uh, killed a number of prominent members of the Illarial family, as well as a few other um, nobles um, that we mentioned. And uh, so our players are all nobility who have obtained invitations to this party, for the most part at the behest of their friend, ally, rival, maybe it's unclear, <laughs> Mavis Ilariel. And uh, they all began to show up to the party. They interacted a bit. And I'm going to throw it to each of them to recap their character's progress thus far in our session. So let's start with Eric as Jenna. Jenna arrived at the manor with her mother, Patrine, who insisted that Jenna needs to represent Tekio well and not her own interests. Uh, upon arriving, she was accosted by some dirty scoundrel, uh, <laughs> Dier, uh, who was awful. Uh, <laughs> and during the party, Jenna uh, reminisced about her uh, late fiance Julian, who was a lowerborn nobleman who did die in the fire two years ago. Uh, Jenna tried to talk with Mavis and had a strange and awkward interaction with her. And Jenna also tried to get some details from Lord Alariel himself about how Alariel was able to afford everything for this party. Mm. And uh, at the end, as uh, Petrine left, uh, Patrine told Jenna to be careful, be good, and behave. And Jenna said she would be perfect. And I'll just add to that. One of the oh. reasons why um, Patrine is concerned about how Jenna's behave, behaving is that Tekiel's position as the top house, there's some concern that it might be precarious. The winter is very cold and they're a shipping yes. house. Things are not going as great as they should. And there, there might be an opportunity coming up that might pass them by if they... Oh, maybe. ...threw it up. Next, let's go to Dier. Venture, All Alex. Right. Uh, yes, I am playing the ever-lovely, ever-charming Dier Venture. No, he's the worst, actually. <laughs> but we're having fun. Um, so he started out, actually, at his home, um, talking to the Kandra, who is currently impersonating his father, um, who told him some very potentially infor uh, important information about things that Mavis Ilariel has been up to lately. Um, and she had slipped a, a private note into his invitation uh, telling him that the race starts at midnight. So he's going to have to investigate what's up with that. Um, he very chivalrously attempted to absolutely get rid of his sister's invitation to this party and is uh, because he, he's very concerned that she might not be keeping the family secrets that he needs her to. And he's quite annoyed that she seems to have found her way here regardless. So... Uh, upon dramatically arriving via steel push rather than carriage, um, he immediately accosted Jenna with a very obnoxious public proposal, <sighs> just as he has done in every public social setting in which he has seen her over basically the past year. And yeah, it didn't go super well for him, but that's to be expected. And then as the party was settling in, he actually excused himself and took a moment to go break into his sister's room and rifle through her things, but didn't, didn't find anything suspicious that she'd brought along. Okay, perfect. And next let's go to Ben as Lucius. So uh, Lucius arrived at the party um, very, very fancily as he does. Um, and he, he arrived, um, he saw his cousins, Penn and Rianne, um, who are... Hastings? Hastings. Um, and Penny and Hastings, who's cousins, um, I believe, on his mother's side, I want to say. Um, 
who filled him in that um, Lady Eliane Venture and uh, Lord Sylvain Hadriel had arrived at the party together unescorted, unchaperoned, <laughs> um, to which uh, Lucia spent the rest of the party delighting in telling everyone. Um, and um, whilst he was uh, kind of... he. he he was there, kind of, to kind of reconnect with his with what we consider one of his best friends, Mavis, who actually hasn't seen since the fire. Um, he spends a lot of time in Luthadel, and she was off gallivanting around the the final empire, doing other things. Um, and so his kind of priority was, was meeting with her. She was being painted by a painter, who and uh, Lucius inter- like messed with the painter to try and get him to throw him off his game. Um, and then, yeah, when when. Dear and uh, Jenna arrived. He just kind of hung out the hung out with Mavis. They had a good time together. Um, they they did their usual thing where Mavis and Jenna and and Dear were friends and uh, not Dier. Mavis, Jenna, and Lucius were friends, and Dier was He's there. Part of the group. He unfortunately <laughs> they don't is. really like him. <laughs> Unfortunately, he is in fact present. Yes, <laughs> he was there. Um, Sylvain yeah. and Elian were there, but uh, they are of low interest to Lucius. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think I'm trying to think if they did anything else at the party other than spread rumors. Oh, um, I, I I started burning um, some bronze, um, but I didn't pick up on anything other than Elian's attempt to burn bronze as well so i kind of picked up on that (laughs) Mm -hmm. and i actually on that point lucius probably doesn't care because he's open but i didn't mention this last time but we know as players that elian didn't get anything from that seeking but lucius might assume that she sensed him as well yes Um, so he might assume she knows he knows yes but even though she doesn't necessarily yeah, next we have Sylvain, Ian. So, Sylvain. Uh, <laughs> uh, we started at the townhouse he is currently staying in with his aunt, Cecily, in Lakeside, elsewhere in the town. Uh, she had recently fallen ill and would not be attending the event. And so it fell to Sylvain to have a meeting with Lord Solace, um, the head of house for Ilari- the Illarials. And he was given a task to mm. begin working on in Cecily's stead, which involves certain threats against the Illarial families. There are rumors that assassins are being approached to take care of someone, including a mysterious burned man who may be related to the fire two years ago. Which, of course, stresses Sylvain out (laughs) incredibly much. (laughs) Poor Sylvain. Um, uh, He later is able to pull Addison aside, um, a close confidant of Mavis, um, and just unloads everything. And she is very helpful um, and warns him not to trust Mavis too much. Mm. For she is, she swims in deeper oceans. Um, And also says that Cecily has been trying to arrange a marriage with Solace for. Uh, for Ro- not Royce, for Sylvain, <laughs> <laughs> for Sylvain, uh, potentially to Mavis, and that how this job turns out will have an effect on that. Um, he is also present. He's in the right place at the right time when a certain Lady of the Mists tries yes. to make entry. <laughs> to the event and last um elian veronica do you want yes to so elian didn't find the invitation addison told her about but while she was looking for it she did find the notes from the and um 
thing they needed the Chandra in their father's desk and find out about Mavis's message to her brother. Um, so she slips out out of the house without the air noticing and goes to Sylvain's house to arrive to the party with him and his aunt Cecily, <laughs> but finds out that Cecily has fallen ill and can't chaperone them like she was expecting. So they arrive to the Alariel Matter, and as everyone else arrives, she interacts with some of her brother's friends, some of whom think there's something going on between her and Sylvain, which they totally <laughs> walked into. <laughs> 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 and we did two as players. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, of course, there's tension with the air because they're both very annoyed at each other, and he didn't want her at the party. And it's not like she's getting along particularly well with the rest of his friends either. Um, she failed to detect exactly who were Alamancers while burning her bronze and just mingled with people, finally noticing the commotion at the end before everyone who wasn't staying overnight left because of the storm hmm. yeah thanks and so yeah we're i'll add one other thing sorry i forget if alex mentioned this but the notes from say nin that uh elian read and dear was advised of also indicated that mavis had been meeting mm -hmm. with informants um so and that venture of some capacity had some interest in finding out more so it's a tangled web mm -hmm. um and so the moment we left off um mavis had just defended this mysterious woman of the mists this woman of ill repute um <laughs> who seemed insistent that she should be admitted to this party um and mavis because it was freezing outside, seemed to take mercy on her and uh, arranged for the guards to send her back to the resort village in her carriage. Um, and then the announcement came that a blizzard was coming in and was worsening quite quickly, and that due to the roads quickly becoming um, crowded with snow, anyone who was not staying, staying the night uh, should consider taking their leave early. Um, so th I think that is where we will pick off. We have, uh, a, many nobles kind of making their way to the door, saying their last goodbyes, um, finishing their drinks, finding their servant servants. It's kind of a bit of a, um, there's a little bit of chaos. Um, and then you also have the smaller select group who are staying behind, who are left to their own devices. Um, so how we'll do this kind of downtime is going to be two to three beats, and we'll just go around and say, what are you doing? And so we'll say this first beat is while people are leaving. So if someone wanted to speak to anyone who does not appear to be staying, you could attempt to do that. Um, but it, it, it's up to you guys. So. Um, who would like to start? I would I get... love to find okay. Lucius okay. out of here and chat. Uh, hey, okay. Jenna. And we'll we'll just go through and see what everyone's doing first before we get into the scenes. So, will Lucius be available for Jenna to speak with? at this um he doesn't have anyone particular that he wants to talk to i think we established after the last episode were ended that uh lucius cousins pen and rianne are staying mm -hmm. the night um yes, so he's the only other people that he's really interested in talking to um so i think he'll he'll he's happy to go along with whatever jenna's uh got planned okay um and then what is deer planning to do during this beat um, I think he is probably just at some point he does want to talk to Lucius, um, but he would not interrupt Jenna and Lucius' conversation. So I think he's probably we, just mingling in the party, catching up on the fact that like apparently there was some incident that he totally missed <laughs> at the end of last time. <laughs> maybe maybe hearing rumors about nonsense going on between his sister and Sylvain. So uh, I don't think he will approach anyone, but and 
I will say, depending on how long Jenna and Lucius's conversation, you could Won't potentially also have a conversation with Lucius uh, during this beat. So you okay. could, Deer could mingle first, see Lucius. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, I think I don't he's wanna... just gonna he's gonna hang back, listen, get a get a feel for the room. Doubtful anybody is going to want to talk to him because he's Dear Venture and nobody enjoys being in a conversation <laughs> with him. But and when you say room, Dear is remaining in the atrium. Uh, yeah, wherever the most people are. Okay. Um, yeah, that so. would be the, the the atrium right now. Yes. Um, he'll, he'll nurse his drink and watch the room. Okay, Sylvain. Go to Elian first, okay? Because like, as the player. I want <laughs> Sylvain to talk with Elian. Sylvain doesn't know he needs to talk to Elian. <laughs> so, like, oh. what Sylvain, like, what Sylvain would probably be attempting right now is the whole, like, attempting to, like, do what Addison suggested of, like, suggesting, like, people that might have it in for the Illarials and trying to gauge people's responses. Like, that's kind of what he would attempt to be doing. Okay, sounds good. And then what is Elian doing? Uh, she'd probably start by talking to Addison. Mm -hmm. um, because she's been wanting to the whole evening. And see if Addison can introduce her to people or, well, reintroduce her to people. Um, to Because she isn't around very much. And so while she knows names and faces, that mm -hmm. she hasn't really talked to anyone. and. Addison seems to know everyone because she's around Ravis all the time. And like Sounds maybe good. try to form friendships, networks, contact, get to know people better than she would already. Okay. So what I'm gonna suggest is we'll do Jenna first, then Deer, and between those two, Lucius might also figure out what he's doing. Um, I have an idea of something I might want to do after I've met with Jenna, depending on how long the meeting with Jenna goes for. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So we'll maybe do Jenna, dear Lucius, um, if that works. And then we'll do Sylvain, then Elian. Mm -hmm. So Sounds good. same Aww. order we uh, mm. went through them in. Nice. Like Perfect. <laughs> so, Jenna, you move to pull. Uh, Lucia, your mother has just said goodbye to you. Um, and she's, she's definitely left. Yeah, like like she's like the only so many carriages can exit the gate at a time. But yeah, she's yeah, not cool. not around. Cool. So uh, Jenna walks up to Lucius and uh, asks. It, it seemed like you were a bit closer to whatever was happening at the door. What? What's your take? Oh, what, what was well, all that? Some uh, crazy lady. I I couldn't tell you. Uh, some woman just try was trying to get in. I think may have been may have been one of the may have been a scar lady of the night, uh, lady of the mists. Mm. I don't know. It was, but she was ranting and raving. It could have. Honestly, I started to think it was some sort of mystery trick of the eye. Uh, so mm, yes. yes, it was it was very unpleasant. Mavis handled it beautifully though, as she's as she does. Mavis. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Uh, could, could I perhaps borrow you for a moment? Uh just 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 a moment. Uh, Absolutely. Great. So uh, I go over to Praylon Verity. Uh, I don't know what she is up to, uh, but she's probably just in the atrium, right? Yeah, Verity is in the atrium. She's uh, speaking. Um, actually, you see uh, she's speaking with just a, a pair of individuals. And as you approach, they seem to be concluding their business and they hand her a few coins, which she um, slips into her um, robes very smoothly. Um, and yeah, we haven't uh, described Verity too much yet. So I'll just say um, she's a kind of uh, sharp uh, featured woman, obviously a bald head. She's an obligator. 
and her tattoos are extensive enough that she's a pre obviously a prelan um but just so she's uh pretty new to her rank as prelan she hasn't had a chance to add and the tattoos include the distinctive stripe um red stripe of the canton of inquisition so yeah you're able to um verity turns to face uh you and lucius and nods Prelon Verdi, uh, I require you to witness a transaction, if you do not mind. Of course, Lady Jenna. Happy to be of service. Uh, and I take them up the stairs. Uh, we're going to go up to the third floor where uh, my room is. Um, ooh, ooh. Is on the third floor in that hallway are there is there anyone there um no not currently perfect uh so uh i i turn to lucius i i put uh my hand on his shoulders like thank you lucius that is really all i needed and i know i can trust you uh i Oh, you a similar favor. Uh, uh, just at some point. Uh, pray on Verity, please make sure you witness that I do owe Lucius a favor. And I, I hand her a coin. Oh, this is one of those, is it? Well, it was, yes, I... <laughs> it was lovely to meet you, pray on Verity. And I do like a very elaborate curtsy. Um, kiss the hand and say... And then just kind of touch Jenna on the shoulder, uh, the, the elbow. Yep. Yeah. And then I will take uh, Verity to uh, yeah, my, my, my chambers. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I'm going to hang around the hallway just for a little bit. Um, not okay. try and listen in. Um, I'm just going to kind of, because I think my room is in the hallway. Yes, it is. Uh, correct. It is. Yes, it is. Once you're alone, um, Verity kind of looks a little... Um, judgmental of lucius as he leaves but that's kind of just her resting face um <laughs> she uh um her her character feature is judgmental gaze um so um, which can be resting very useful for an obligator yes indeed um and so she she turns to jenna and says i can't stay too long um, and we probably can't afford to meet like this again unless it's urgent. Um, uh. There's considerable pressure on me to remain impartial for this event and uh, enforce the ministry's edict. And mm -hmm. as much as I value our friendship, I, I can't jeopardize this opportunity. Absolutely, Prelon, and... Uh, I, I did just want to say it is truly lovely to at last call you Prelon, Your Grace. Yes, the it does suit, doesn't it? It absolutely does. I've always acted with the utmost respect for the ministry, as what, what is good for the ministry is the best for House Techiel. Uh, but there are a few things I need to discuss. I know we had talked of certain ministry involvement regarding the manor. Uh, I wanted to ask if you had learned anything new. I, I, I find it very suspicious that Lord Ilariel could both afford to rebuild this keep, this manor, rather, and also affords such a hefty protection order for this weekend. Yes. I haven't been able to find out much more, unfortunately. The protection order, as far as I know, is legitimate. The ministry would not issue such a public edict um, unless it had been properly compensated. Um, it mm. would be a disturbing precedent. Um, the reconstruction, as far as I can tell, came about as a collaboration between the cantons 
of orthodoxy, finance, and resource. Um, mm. Finance and resource are fairly obvious, materials and Indeed. money, but orthodoxy is curious. I haven't been able to determine if they were just exercising oversight. Um, your brother, Tavidian, might know more, um, mm. but we haven't been associating lately because Indeed. I fear my association with him might interfere with my advancement. Quite. Indeed. Uh, it is very appreciated, Your Grace. Um, um, I, I, I will also say the ministry doesn't do anything without a reason. So... Mm. Indeed. And the fact that this isn't more widely known implies to me that there's a reason the ministry doesn't want it more widely known. Mm. Agreed. Your Grace, I know your time is very short. Uh, I, I do hope that me taking Lucius for a brief interaction here is not too untoward. I'm very aware of uh, your status here. Uh, it it but, should provide sufficient cover, and my status as chaperone should prevent any ill rumor from attaching to either of you. Though, indeed, I suspect that Lord Lucius cares a little less about such things. We are old friends. I am not concerned. But I, I, I do need perhaps a bit more personal advice. Uh, I... <sighs> It's about Lady Mavis. I fear she does not trust me any longer. Uh, she has not responded to any of my letters since the fire. Uh, and she has a new crew she focuses on. Uh, and I had a very strange interaction with her when I arrived. Uh, and I, I am worried. If you know any information about her specifically, or any secrets she perhaps holds, uh, I could use them. Uh, how does... How does Mavis treat the Ska these days? I saw two interactions where she... Mm, overrules? Other Lariels, even Felix, the heir, in which I find very concerning. It, it, it just reminds me of, well, the matter with Chess, uh, Julian's mm. bodyguard, and sympathies there. Yes, uh, that was unfortunate business. Um, hmm. It's always troublesome to the Ministry and to the Canton of Inquisition when... Someone with such clear ties uh, to the Ska Rebellion as this individual you mention um, worms his way into elite society. Um, <laughs> Ver Verity will uh, continue and say, um, and we appreciate your assistance in cleaning up that little mess. Um, according to my sources, your assistance in that regard, within the ministry at least, has cleared up any speculation that your association with uh, Chess's employer, Julian, um, might have involved you in these nefarious activities. So you can feel confident that the ministry's faith in you and your family, um, if there were any doubts, it has been restored. I assure you that is exactly what I wish. And as always, if the ministry needs anything of me, I believe the matter with chess shows my use. Yes. As for Mavis Alariel, to my knowledge, the ministry does not have any open investigations into her conduct. Mm. But due to her mutual association um, with your former fiancé, Julian, and uh, her potential proximity to this individual, any expression of sympathy to the Ska 
is something the ministry might take very seriously. And I think we would want to look into. Um, I recently dealt with a very difficult case, actually, of a woman, a prominent noblewoman having an affair with a ska man. And uh, mm. we're uh, looking to crack down on that. Um, mm. In fact, you should know that case arose directly um, from the individual you took care of. Um, hmm. His mother was actually uh, Lady Lunarche, the mother of your fiancé, and it seems hmm. she had some ill... Uh, and you can see Verity has a lot of distaste as she says, says this. Um, um, ill... Uh, thought out decisions and we received a confession from a ska man who she had an affair with shortly mm. before her marriage um, mm. we believe and that's what led us to believe that uh, this chess individual might be mm. the product of that relationship that makes sense do you you haven't heard anything that well with the chess being Julian's bodyguard, I suppose. It, it is suspicious, uh, but you, at Inquisition, you haven't learned anything new in that respect. He's still noble and not a sympathizer, as far as you know? Our investigations, uh, to my knowledge, um, I was involved with the investigation of uh, this chess individual who you took care of. Um, I've not been involved in the investigation relating to the Ilarial fire where your fiance perished. Um, we do have some obligators who are on both files as there are some connections, but mm. to my knowledge, nothing has been turned up. Um, the only worrying spot on Julian's legacy, so to speak, is his association with this uh, chess individual. Mm. Um, and it's not clear the extent to which his true nature was being concealed uh, from those around him. If Julian were alive, we would certainly be doing a thorough investigation, giving his uh, mother's weaknesses and his mm. apparent closeness with this individual. But considering he's already deceased the branch has already been cut off and so the poison fruit has been dealt with sufficiently for the Indeed. ministry's taste you know everything i know about uh lord julian uh thank you very much prelan um i will do my best to keep an eye on lady mavis uh she's yes. concerned i and if, if you if learn you anything a... concerning, please let me know. And absolutely. If you spare an eye to observe, that might be useful as well. If she potentially has any dealings, that might be very interesting. And if she has dealings that she is not informing the ministry of. Yes. That is would be quite dire. Well, you you know I trust your judgment implicitly, um, but I would be careful with who you associate with. Tekiel's mm -hmm. reputation um, was largely unscathed, almost entirely unscathed, um, following this incident uh, with Chess and Julian, be largely because of your actions. But if markers of suspicion were to multiply um, due to your association with Mavis or others, if there is untoward activity, um, that could bring scrutiny back on yourself. And your family and you personally have been very good to me in my career thus far, and I would hate um, to see your station jeopardized. I very much want you uh, to continue to succeed. It, 
it is very challenging for me to both keep an eye on Mavis and not associate with Mavis, but uh, you well know that I am very open to the ministry and its intelligence mm -hmm. efforts, uh, especially Inquisition. And uh, I will do my best. Is there anyone you think I should not associate with in particular, other than Mavis? Well, I think we both know Mavis keeps certain questionable associations herself. Mm. And if scrutiny were to fall on her, um, if members of her circle are also in ill repute, it might fall on them as well. Um, so, and people within the ministry who find certain nobles to be inconveniences or troublesome might take it as an excuse to deal with them. And I would hate for any scandal again to fall on you. I can only hope that I will assist the ministry's acts to be, well, come down on other heads. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I hope to be immensely useful to you, Your Grace, uh, and the ministry, and I am always very interested in any tasks you might have for me. So if you have any mm. matters you would like me to attend to, I shall do so. Uh, I, I, I absolutely, I'll let you know. And while I might not be able to have time for another meeting, Indeed. Um, if my services are required in any other capacity, yes. um, you know how to signal me. Absolutely. Thank you, Your Grace. Uh, may the sliver of infinity live for all time. Indeed. Uh, and we as... should exit separately. Um, Agreed. So it's not assumed that we were meeting this entire time. Uh, why don't you leave first? Uh, I need to freshen up a little before I head back down. Okay. So Verity exits. Is Lucius still in the hallway? I was going to ask. So I know we said we do <clears throat> DA next. Can yeah, I do my Lucius? You can go next. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Whilst that conversation is happening um, yeah. in the in the three minutes that you guys were talking. Um, oh, excellent. <laughs> Lucius, um, I assume he has like a room key. He's been given a room key at this point. He knows he's in room. Yes. Um, nine. Yeah. Yes. I want to try the rooms next to room nine. I want to, I want to firstly try my own room to see how the lock works. Um, put in the key, turn it, do that. Um, I'm then going to try the door across the room from me. And see um, if it opens. It is locked. Okay. And then I'm going to try the room next to mine. Um, that is also uh, locked. Okay. I'm then going to go into my room, and I'm going into the shared bathroom that I have with between me and the room next to me. I'm going to see if I can get in that room that way. Roll a spear. You can spend, I'll say you can spend a spirit to luck out with this door. Um, okay. If you have more than two spirits. If you have two spirits, you can't spend any. I have, how do I do that? Where's my thing here, Bobby? I have four spirits. So I'm going to spend a spirit. Uh, okay. And the roll will be, we'll do a three. Um, because these rooms aren't used too often, and I think their normal status would be kept locked. But the servants were just through cleaning and preparing for tonight. So there is, it's a less than 50% chance that okay. this door was left unlocked. And I'm looking at my, all of my stats and stuff, and there is nothing I can add to this because this is not what Lucius is for, but he's being very nosy. Um, um well, let me just see. Oh, could I use my destiny? I don't know if I've said what my destiny is. Um, but my destiny is to get a certain item back from someone. Um, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Um, but this um. someone is not the person staying in the room you're attempting to break <laughs> into. Um, okay. Trying to break into Mavis's room? Maybe. 
uh, so I did yeah, I, I don't think you can add anything. Okay, so. I'm gonna roll my four dice. Okay, and that's two fours four. and two nudges. So it's success. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so mark your spirits down one, but the door yep. is unlocked, and you enter. And we keep those two nudges, by the way. Bank those. I believe this is Sylvain's room okay it, it was the room sylvain was originally supposed to be in oh right but he now he's in cecily's, in cecily's. so is yeah. there is, so is this room like not made up there's no bags there's nothing's unpacked uh yes this room would be empty okay uh i'm gonna Lu lucius is gonna curse to himself mildly um and then and then close and and leave and then just just kind of leave as uh, okay. back into the party. You don't have to spend anything, but roll another spirits just to see how long that took in comparison to the conversation with uh, Verity and Jenna. It's a difficulty one. Um, so yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah, and I roll. So, yeah, you're 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 gone um, before Verity. Um, so you Excellent. don't see each other. Um, cool. Sounds yeah. good. I head um, down into the back into the grand the grand atrium. Okay. Now let's go to Pierre. I think uh, this has been very Lucius heavy so far. But if Lucius does come back <laughs> into the atrium, Dier might go approach Lucius if you're up for that, Ben. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So yeah, I think he's he's got his drink in hand and he will sidle up knowing that he is uh, currently a little bit indebted to Lucius, actually, and is uh, here, here to make good on his uh, previous promise. So he will uh, have a little, it's probably, probably a little pouch that he maybe uh, walks over and, and slips into, into Lucius's hand of uh, oh. <laughs> Grey Fester. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> technically a poison, but uh, maybe maybe a little recreational use. Uh, Never. If, if everything's a poison in a high enough dosage, Alex. Exactly. Everything's <laughs> a poison. <laughs> high enough dosage. Um, and we'll just say, uh, there you go. The debt is paid. Don't suppose you were uh, looking for a little bit extra? Did I overhear you're supposed to be meeting Mavis later? Oh. um Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Don't worry, I think this, this should do fine. Don't you worry. Yeah, she um, seems pretty allergic to fun these days anyway, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I, I've been trying to get her alone in this party, and she's just she's just so busy with everyone else. It's so... Uh, Too many new friends of hers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that Addison that she's always with. Oh, but uh, what is going on there? Honestly, you think we would have learned our lesson within our little group after Jenna and this nonsense with Lunarsh, but here we are, Mavis making exactly the same mistakes. Mm. <sighs> yes. I do have to ask, mm. do you have any idea what is up with this rumor bet that there's something happening between my sister and Sylvain Hadriel of all people? <sighs> Well, you seem like the sort of person who would know where that has come from. I can tell you exactly where it's come from. They <clears throat> arrived at this party together, unchaperoned. And I, I may have mentioned it to some people because that is. Um, I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, I know. It's uh, he's definitely way below her station, but you know, the the ventures do need at least one realistic marriage proposal happening these days don't you agree <laughs> is this about the business between me and dql really <laughs> chivalry is not a good color on you lucius <laughs> <laughs> i'm just dear i'm just tired of seeing you make a fool of yourself constantly it's honestly i'm actually looking out for you believe it or not I thought watching me make a fool of myself was everyone at court's favorite pastime. I think we're both well aware that TKL is more than capable of handling herself against the likes of me. It's 
it's just a bit of fun, really. Mm -hmm. The next time Cousin Straff comes after me wondering what I'm doing to try to find a suitable match, I can at mm -hmm. least point to the fact that I've gone through the motions. I mean, who would be a more suitable match than the heiress to the currently most powerful house, right? How mm -hmm. could you possibly mm -hmm. object? Yeah, I just... I I just find it a little bit pathetic these days, you know, I think. <laughs> um, and so it's, as I said, whilst everyone, make, whilst everyone loves to see you make a fool of yourself, this one's getting a little bit tired, you know? Look, so long as Mavis has decided that fun is off the table and doesn't want to even associate with us these days, mm. I need some way to entertain myself at these boring parties. And... Look, you might be her friend, but even you have to admit, it's a little bit fun to watch perfect, no hair, out of place Jenna Tikiel get caught off guard <laughs> because I'm bothering her for a little while. <laughs> if anything, if anything, I'm making her look good. You know, giving, giving her a chance to shoot me down in front of everyone. She ought to thank me. <sighs> and with the, the real service that I'm doing her in this regard. She ought to be careful. She might end up falling for me legitimately. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the funniest thing you've ever said to you. Um, it's only <laughs> I can be a very funny person when I try. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like watching watching Jenna dust some ash off herself every so often has like I said, it's losing its spark. And so I just just think about it next before you try it next time, and I don't know. Maybe find someone more, more realistic. I've heard. I've heard uh, Angelique Bouvidas. I heard she's currently on the market looking for uh, looking for men to entertain herself. You've got to be kidding! Absolutely not. <laughs> Well, they're not. She's beautiful, and she's just, you know, did you see what she was wearing? That color, I've seen it look so good on other people. I think, you know, it was very bold of her to wear it, and so it just, <laughs> it's, it's... You're, you're not exactly selling her as a very particularly <laughs> interesting match, Lucius. <laughs> uh, all I'm these, just... all these noble women at court are so... Empty and vapid. Everyone just wants to play the game, and I'm so sick of it. Like, don't we have anything better to do than have the same conversations over and over and tread the same stupid party lines and rivalries and alliances that everyone has done for the past five generations? Look, dear. Ugh. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of arrange his tie a little bit. I'm gonna be a look, dear. <laughs> but the game is so much fun when you're good at it. And then I'll pat him on the chest, and then I'm going to walk off. <laughs> he just oh, rolls his eyes and walks away. <laughs> Incredible. Absolutely <laughs> great. Gold. So, you two separate. Um, and then, Sylvain, you... Wait, so, I guess, where are you trying to chat up people? And are you trying to chat up people as they're leaving? Or are you looking for someone who is uh, kind of staying put? I would probably start with the people who are leaving. Okay. Just like, because like, only so many people can leave at a time. So it's like, I'm sure there's a, not a queue forming, but like people are congregating. Yeah. So it's just like, no, people need small talk while they're waiting for other people to people, filter out. People are waiting for like, uh, people are waiting for servants to grab their outwear mm -hmm. um, or waiting to be notified that their carriage is uh, prepared to go uh, you know their socialization is getting cut short so no one wants to wait in the carriage to leave yeah. um which ironically is probably making it take longer but these are nobles um so they're uh, all waiting inside chatting until they're notified oh your carriage is next in line and then they head out mm -hmm. um so yeah there are some people sitting idle you can chat with um, since you're not approaching anyone specific, we'll probably just do a roll. Um, so you're attempting, you said, to apply Addison's advice. And mm -hmm. so give me like an example of a, a line um, you're using with someone. <laughs> Come on, Himbo. Be a spy. Figure it out, dude. <laughs> no pressure. 
<laughs> Man, I, I heard, I you... heard burn scars hurt a lot. Do you know anyone with burn scars? <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I would let Sylvain spend some spirit to happen upon a conversation that would naturally flow into the topic that he is interested in in bringing up. Because, like, people are chattering, right? So Yeah, uh, it's worth spending a spirit on. I mean, we're going to get them back after... Yeah. Uh, the night session right? so but there's things later on that like i might want spirits for. okay okay <laughs> yeah. and spending um, it does lower your rating too yeah, so does. then even if you're just doing a general role mm-hmm. so yeah you can spend a spirit for that opportunity or you can just kind of go in blind and i'm just gonna go in blind okay. and it's he's gonna like draw on like the like oh lord solace made such a big deal about the prohibition you wouldn't use sylvain would not use the word prohibition <laughs> that, the protections for tonight yeah, protection the protections edict. for tonight i've heard rumors and like he would like pull like some like not a great house but a kind of like from like houses 11 to 15 that like they're just trying to like claw their way into the top Mm. 10 that he doesn't actually know anybody in that house it's just like oh that house is trying to be important those are the vibes i okay yeah um yeah that's not a bad tack to take we're gonna do a charm three to see if you pull this off and then may i add my personality of empathetic like get a read on people yes um yes what about my short-term drive of making connections (laughs) sure okay yeah um so Weedle all of those dice. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so three difficulty, seven dice pool. Yeah. Uh, That's a lot of ones. I I will. I'll bank the nudge. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. Um, We'll come back to you. Um, we're going to go uh, to Elian, who I believe is approaching Addison. Yes. Um, so um, Mavis is off somewhere. So you find Addison um, as she, you and Addison have a bit of a, developed a bit of a friendship. So you know she mm-hmm. kind of, if she's not with someone kind of takes a post and kind of watches her surroundings um, without interacting uh, too much. Um, Again, she's very careful not to step out of line because she knows her house is like very, very low and only is granted the privilege of enjoying this space due to her cousin's association with Lord Elariel and her friendship with Mavis. So she knows people aren't actually interested in her and she is careful not to kind of overstep her welcome. Um, She knows she's kind of being tolerated. So she's just kind of watching, hanging out. um, But she sees you approach and smiles uh, somewhat warmly um, and says, "Uh, Eliane, um, good to see you again. I'm I'm so glad that you made it. I am glad I couldn't make it. Thank you for telling me that I was on the guest list once again. Um, I was wondering, you seem to know everyone here because you hang around with Mavis a lot. Um, could you introduce me to well, I recognize names and faces, but I'm not in these circles very often. And it seems you are. Um, I'd like to meet some people. It's true. I've met a lot of people 
at Mavis's side, but usually they don't form an attachment with me, and I'm sorry, Elian, but there is some concern as well due to your rank. It might seem beneath you for me to be trying to make introductions for you with people who are closer to your station. Um, no, I understand. Um, maybe you could... I could uh, think of some... And she kind of trails off um, as she seems to notice something and says, Elian, um, I need to take care of something uh, for a moment. Um, and she seems very distracted. Uh, could we talk more later? Or, um, or you could join me. I just see some people I need to talk to. Oh, I was going to suggest you could point some people out to me. And I could approach them. I mean, I am a venture. It shouldn't be that hard. I just don't know um, who. But if you don't mind me joining you, uh, uh of course we, we we need to. Uh, <laughs> I should go now, though. Um, I'll I'll think of some names. Um, if you want to join me, feel free. If not, I'd probably start with some of. You know, Mavis's friends, like uh, Lucius, um, he seems to like to talk a lot. <laughs> um, but um, I need to go. And so she starts heading off. Do you follow her? And then we'll definitely take note of Lucius's name. Because, I mean, she also knows he's an open seeker. And so that is something where she can go. But she's also very curious about why Addison changed all of a sudden and so are the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like the plot. Like, okay. I'll follow Mavis and after that I'll go talk to Lucius. You'll you'll follow Addison? Mavis Ad Addison, yeah. Addison? Okay. Addison is heading over um to a small group of nobles who are in the process of leaving and that is they are chatting with Sylvain. And, uh, oh, oh. and there seems to be a bit of a awkward pause, um, like, and the nobles are giving <laughs> kind of a curious look. Um, and the DM has gotten you so good, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder. But, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so... Addison um, swings in and she says, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Sylvain, am I interrupting something? Um, what metaphor do I use to describe how he reacts? He is very thankful for her approach. It's like, no, not interrupting at all. Oh, oh, good. Um, my apologies, uh, my lord and uh, my ladies. Uh, and she kind of curtsies to the people you're speaking with, um, who are like kind of middle ranked, but uh, similar in rank to you, but definitely above her. Um, and she says, um, it doesn't happen, have to happen right now, but uh, Lady Mavis was hoping to speak to you. It appears um, she's heard about some sort of security concerns, and she thought you might have some information that might help put her at ease. Um, and the... Uh, actually, I'll make a roll for this to see how smoothly... <laughs> well, that's um, security-related information that... Addison that... <laughs> is able to provide an assist here. Okay. okay. Um, Couple of threes. So... She handles it smoothly, and the other nobles kind of say, Oh, so the ministry's edict wasn't just a precaution then, or a, like a, it wasn't just a formality. 
Um, and Mavis kind of blushes um, and says, oh, sorry, I, I don't really know anything. I shouldn't talk out of turn. I, I just know that um, Lady Mavis was hoping to speak to um, Lord Sylvain. Um, and that I think it's probably nothing, but she would be appreciative of any information which would uh, set her at ease. Um, as well, of course, as the the sources of such information. And uh, one of the people assembled says, well, <clears throat> if, if Lady Mavis is asking, um, I, I haven't heard anything specifically, but, uh, you know, we all have been wondering about Ilariel's prospects lately since the fire. Things have been a little quiet, so... Um, we were, you know, pleased to see this party go ahead and curious about the reconstruction efforts. The, the manor seems immaculate, which certainly provides a vote of confidence for Ilariel's um, standings. Uh, but I don't think anyone here is, any, is aware of anything that would jeopardize uh, that. And then someone else pipes up, well, you know, the Techiels have been paranoid for ages with this um, <laughs> winter um, prolonging. I have it on good authority that the, the Isenries are making promises to some of their trade contracts that they could deal with this frozen canal situation much more quickly. So I'm sure they're getting cagey and might be exploring whatever option they have to stay in power. Everyone knows that Venture is destined to take back their place eventually. Um, the person who's speaking now, you know, is a uh, vassal house to Venture. Um, mm -hmm. So they're uh, obviously towing the good man, party line. Good man. Um, <laughs> so with him. Addison's assist, you are able to acquire a, a little bit of uh, gossip. Um, you don't know that uh, you don't know too much if that's actually leading anywhere. Um, but uh, Mavis then kind of also um, Mavis or Addison? I'm uh, sorry. Addison also then kind of uh, stays with you and continues conversing. Um, Eliane, have you joined them or have you stayed apart from this circle? Yeah, she she has. Um, it, it seems to her like the perfect situation to get to know some people. Yes, most of them are below her, but yeah. you did mention Mavis was there, so Sorry, Mavis. I meant to say Addison. Mavis okay. is not. Uh, she Addison name dropped Mavis. Okay, but Mavis was not actually. Um, and then this just seems a perfect situation. Okay, get information, get to know people. Uh, yeah. They are, they aren't in the top ten, but they aren't mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. like low ranked houses either. So it is a, a good place to start. So Elian, I'll say. You can roll either charm or you can roll your family, um, depending on how, because um, you're trying to make an impression and potentially build mm -hmm. contacts for later. So if you're primarily kind of relying on your venture name, you can roll family. If you're trying to kind of more rely on your personal charisma, you would roll charm. The family is higher. But she wouldn't want to leave her family name because of the air. <laughs> uh, the disasters he's made. So I'd probably okay. roll charm. Okay. But I do want to add um, the feature of trustworthy demeanor and uh, yeah. maybe her drive of get alliances of her own to protect her. Absolutely. So you, you can add those two dice. And even though you're not using your family, um, uh, Addison would have introduced you at some point uh, during that mm -hmm. conversation. Um, and they, some of them, like the the, the venture ally knows who you are um, okay. as well and is very pleased to see you. And due to your venture name, it, I think it's, even though you're not 
leaning too hard on that. It won't be too hard to pull this off. So I'm just going to put it at a difficulty two. Okay, so the dice I had at a difficulty two. Hey! Ah, great! Three, three nudges! Okay. <laughs> and do you want to bank those, I assume? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, no, you seem to have left a good impression, and you get the sense that you could get in touch and speak with these people at a later date and continue developing uh, those relationships. Um, their, sh uh, their carriage is called, and they kind of move off leaving Addison, um, Sylvain, and Eliane um, alone for a moment. Mm -hmm. And Addison turns to Sylvain and she's like, I I'm sorry, Sylvain, I hope you didn't mind my intrusion. No, I... I think you salvaged the situation. Okay. Uh, I, I... I just I, wanted to... And she kind of... Um, Veronica, roll a wits for me. <laughs> um, difficulty. Um, actually, this will be a contest. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. So I'll take off the difficulty five. thing. Addison likes Sylvain back, maybe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Bail them no. out. And so, yeah, you you roll, and then I will roll once I figure out. Let it be a mystery. Ooh, Let it be a mystery. On Elyon's wits. <laughs> oh, no, oh, wow. Addison got a four. <laughs> so, um, Veronica, uh, Elian doesn't notice this, but Sylvain does. Addison, as she's speaking, kind of glances just out of the side of her eye to Elian, kind of signaling. <laughs> that she's being careful about what she says to you in in front of Eliane um, okay. and kind of trying to affirm that she hasn't broken your trust. Mm -hmm. um, and she, okay. uh, but yeah, Eliane doesn't uh, notice anything. Yeah, uh, I have a list maybe, of things. Addison is uh, quite, mm -hmm. you're getting the sense that Addison is quite smooth um, in her interactions. This um, is why she's super hot, and I love her. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is why Sylvain loves, loves her. It's incompetence. Like, <laughs> um, and Good Addison job. goes on to say, she's like, uh, Sylvain, um, Mavis is really busy, and mm -hmm. I'm... People tend to ignore me when she's not around. Uh, if you don't mind... Uh, would you permit me to accompany you um, for some of this evening um, mm -hmm. and speak in your social circles? I, I promise I won't um, be a uh, liability or um, won't speak out of turn. Roll if you or what kind of role were you asking for? I would let you roll a wits. Um, and add your empathetic trait. Um, uh, difficulty one. These are my favorite. Uh, yeah. yeah. Three, <laughs> dice. Three <laughs> dice. Um. That's a zero. Two nudges. And two nudges. That's a zero. That's two nudges. I do have one banked nudge. You could turn that into a success oh. if you wanted to. I want to turn it into a success. Come on. I'm... Yeah. Um, you get the sense the that Addison is trying very hard to cut you a break and offer her assistance mm -hmm. with well, staying discreet. Yeah. Um, um, that she's kind of seen your situation. She knows you're overwhelmed, and I tried doing what oh she suggested God. and crashed and burned. <laughs> first, <laughs> yeah, first attempt. Instantly. Yeah. Um, uh, what Sylvain would say is also, I think, with that wits, recognize that she intervened pretty quick, which means she was keeping an eye on you. Mm. Um. Oh. Yeah. I uh, what he says is. 
I can think of very few things I would like more. Um, <laughs> La Lady Elian, um, I uh, don't know if I think the company you'll want to be approaching might be a little above Sylvain and I, um, but I can jot down some names who I think might be approachable. And uh, she does. Um, Lucius is on there. Um, she also jots down Kenton and Angelique Bouvidas. Okay. Um, she notes that, well, she's not sure they'll have useful information or um, they are of high status and hmm. seem like they might be a good fit for you to form a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Kenton Hot and Angelique Bouvidas. They're not both Bouvidas. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Kenton, Kenton Hot and Angelique Bouvidas. His last name is different. Yeah. <laughs> For now, what's going on at there. this point, they're trying <laughs> to make progress on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she also notes that uh, because Hot and Bouvidas are enemies, um, you might want to be careful, but it could be a good idea to have an ally on both sides of the conflict if Elian's goal is to build uh, influence. Thank you very much, Addison. I appreciate this. Okay, I need to find a way to talk to Sylvain at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it needs to happen. She she could... So You could tell Addison you'd like to borrow Sylvain quickly before you yeah. separate. Like, yeah, you, um, you have a relationship. Yeah, um... Before the two of you go on, may I borrow Sylvain for a moment? Oh, of course. Um, absolutely. Um, and we'll say maybe that Addison has pulled Elian aside. Like, she's kind of said, mm -hmm. Sylvain, like, uh, I just want to say goodbye to Elian. Mm -hmm. If that were... I know we're kind of retconning a bit, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes and sense would me. Sylvain try to listen in, or would he kind of let them? No. Um, okay. no. So, listen, uh, like, up lowers her voice slightly and mm -hmm. says, um, there are rumors circulating about you and Sylvain. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that's intentional or that you're hoping will happen or that's um, undesired, but I just thought you should know so you're careful with your interactions because if you're obviously Sylvain's a, a friendly person and I think you're you're very kind as well, but I just wouldn't want anyone to get the wrong impression unless you're intending um, to give that impression. No, thank you. I was aware. I've been hearing about them mm -hmm. for a good yeah. portion of the night. I actually wanted to address those exact rumors. Yeah. Make sure we're both on the same page. Of course. That, that's, that, that's good uh, to be on the same page. And, and you know, I think... But... Okay, I wait. think you know how to be careful, but I don't think you should let rumor dictate who you're friends with either so i i am yeah. not trying to um, so how much would eliana know about addison's relationship with sylvain and would like is there a chance she would like to immediately tell addison like it's just rumors it there's nothing going on there you know that addison and sylvain have a friendship that they're close. Um, I would say Addison has never mentioned. Addison doesn't talk about romance. Um, in general, Addison doesn't talk about herself. She's more of a listener um, and a provider of advice. Usually when she's she's kind of like a sounding board and you can see how someone like Mavis, who potentially lives a very interesting, sometimes dramatic life might get along well with someone who is a sounding board, right? Um, and that's been your experience with Addison as well. So, yeah, you know that she and... You would have kind of trust that she has Sylvain's interests 
at heart. Um, but there wouldn't be any indication whether that's just out of fondness or friendship okay. or if it's something different. And I imagine Sylvain hasn't said anything. No. Okay. He's also, he's not necessarily subtle. <laughs> okay. um, if you're wondering if you can tell if Sylvain has a crush on Addison, I would let you roll. Oh, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. Um, I would well allow you to roll a wits to see if that's okay. something you've been able to deduce in the past. Because um, you've been around I, both of them. Yeah. Um, so. Can I add the trustworthy demeanor? I'm going to say uh, no, because this isn't yeah, about I you trust like, them. Yeah. They trust you. Um, This is more, are you Intuition. catching? Yeah. Are you picking up on what uh, Sylvain's? Um, yeah, none of them would have information said anything the <laughs> other ones. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Also, it's they really information. Anything, so it's not that's true. That's true. Yeah. It's more yeah. intuition. It's more vibe and, check. And this also isn't, yeah, and it's not information that Eliane is actively seeking. Mm -hmm. It's information yeah. we're seeing yeah. if she noticed passively. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't think I you can add a trait, unfortunately. Those. So it's just uh, your... You have six wits, right? Yeah, it, it's good. I was just wondering. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to set difficulty. Oops. That's okay. It's a good. five. You rolled a so five anyway. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, you, you kind Ooh. of have gotten vibes um, that Sylvain might be interested in Addison, for sure. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. bank those two nudges because there's, I don't need them right now. Yeah. Um, really? You don't? Oh you don't want to boost that? <laughs> It's very obvious, Sylvain's <laughs> in there. Don't want to know all of Sylvain's deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> I think this is the only one. <laughs> he knows uh, secrets, but they're not dark. Such a sweet boy. About him. He doesn't have dark secrets. <laughs> not about him. Um, so, yeah, do you say anything else then with having that knowledge? Yeah. Um, by the way, I just wanted to let you know i mean there's nothing really going on we're friends and you know the situation with my invitation so i figured it would be best to arrive with someone who i knew for sure would have an invitation and i wasn't expecting cecily not being able to come either so that took me by surprise uh, uh, thought, uh, you'd like to know well you have my uh, confidence, and I'm grateful for your trust. Um, it, it's your business, though. Um, but I think that makes sense. And these nobles always find something to gossip about. Um, and I they haven't heard do. anything ill toward about either of you before now. So if your desire is to squash this rumor, I think that should be manageable. Thank you. And if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. I will. I still am not sure how I'm going to handle it, but I appreciate it. So I think that uh, Addison will rejoin Sylvain, but mm -hmm. I think that concludes that first beat. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. If that works. So we'll say now the nobles have exited. Um, and people are starting to break off throughout the manor. Um, anyone who's in the at anyone who's in the atrium will see Lord Solace, uh, Tenille, um, and Loris um, head off. Uh, that's Tenille Urbane, Lady Urbane, and they will uh, head up the stairs. Um, Have I come downstairs by now? Um, you, you maybe pass them on the okay. stairs. Cool. Actually, no, your conversation wasn't that long. So yeah, you, no. you've come downstairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is her fortune teller with her? Her mystic? No, her fortune teller is not with her. Um, you might recall that Solace said the entertainment is spaced throughout, mm, um, yeah. the manor. Oh. Um, hmm. so, uh, so Solace, um, yeah, uh, Lady Urbane and Loris Tenebrian uh, kind of break off um, 
Loris is holding a bottle of champagne in his hand and a couple servants kind of peel off uh, to follow them to attend to their needs. In the atrium, you don't see Kenton and Angelique anywhere. Um, mm. They, mm. they seem to be <laughs> somewhere else, up to? <laughs> either separate or together. Um, and Penn and Rianne have just finished a conversation with a departing guest and are looking eager to find someone else to speak with. Um, so that's kind of the status quo. Um, I think everyone, unless some of you, Jenna's just, Jenna's arrived back. Eliane and Sylvain are still in the atrium. Uh, Dear and Lucius, since you had a kind of shorter thing and weren't moving as much, if you had wanted to have peeled off to a different room at some point before this beat started, I would have let you, but uh, other your, otherwise, um, okay. I think we can assume the group's all in the atrium. So, um, yeah, let's just do another round. Um, we have the status quo. Um, so, and you, the wind is really starting to howl outside and the, um, it's stained glass fading, facing the outer courtyard, but the inner courtyard and the lake, you can see it's just a sea of white. Like you can barely discern the lake from the sky. Um, it's visibility is really going down. Favorite and, weather. Uh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. And um, around now is probably, since it would be sh uh, shorter days probably, around now is also when the sun is starting to set. Um, you don't see any evidence of the mist, mist coming out yet, but that might be because of the snow. So it's all white, you know, yeah. visibility from just snow haze. <laughs> it, it's it's getting dark and visibility is bad, um, but it, it's probably still like sunset, uh, though, like there's still some light out there. Yeah. Who should we start with? Um, should we go reverse order from last time? Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, Jenna's a woman with a plan, but I don't mean to always go first. Oh, it's just, he has plans. <laughs> no, <but> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll decide what order we resolve things in, but this is okay. just for saying oh, what okay. we want to do. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, because mm -hmm. mine involves uh, Eliane. Um, okay. What I want to do this. Well, if um, you want to, if you want to declare yes. first, then. Cool. Then. Um, I want to, so first things first, is I want to gather Pen and Rianne. Um, just okay. kind of... Um, Make a, make a gesture towards them to bring them over. Um, Grand Atrium's cleared out of people. This is not where the party's at anymore. Um, so I'm going to make my way kind of through the solar. Um, what entertainment is on in the solar? In the solar. Acrobats, right? I believe so. Is the acrobats, yeah. I need okay. to write this down on my map. <laughs> I was going to say, because I'm about to go through all the rooms and ask you what's in them. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, gotta get the best um, entertainment. In the exactly. Who is where? Let's find out. So yeah. Um. So is Lucius exploring the whole manor? Then? Uh, he's really just With gonna go solo library, then the lounge, to, and find something he likes. Okay. So, um. So we'll resolve that. Um. When it comes, to, so you're you're basically what you're. Intended action is is you're taking Pen and Rianne and you're trying to find something fun to do. Yeah, somewhere so we can post up where we're entertained. Um, I'll have a brief conversation with them, see what fun bits of gossip they've heard over the evening, and then I'll get them to go fetch Eliane for me. Is my plan. Mm, You'll get Pen and Rianne to fetch Eliane yes. for you. Interesting. interesting. Okay. okay. Um, well, let's go to Eliane then. Uh, um, what will you be doing potentially when Penn and Rianne come to fetch you? What? So, I'm just looking at the map here. She'll probably. Um, it depends on how full the Grand Atrium is and where people have gone. Mm -hmm. But she'll pull Sylvain aside. Some of her people won't notice that because she wants to try to manage. The rumors. She doesn't want it to be too suspicious that. I mean, she's talking to Sylvain privately. 
But if there are way too many people and it would be too obvious that she's pulled him aside into another room, she'll just stay in the atrium, depending on what's going on. And have that conversation of, like, regarding the rumors, get them both on the same page. Like, there's nothing going on here. We both know that. How do we want to handle this? And then after that, go talk to Lucius. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Um, Matt. Yeah. Where's Mavis? Oh, that is a good question. Um, (laughs) Mavis is not in the atrium. Okay. Has anyone? Okay. Uh, At this point, Mavis is not in the atrium. Sure. Jenna noticed that uh, Lady Urbane uh, went upstairs and is... She she notices uh Elian and Sylvain talking and she uh, and Jenna will go uh find Lady Urbane. And um so let's maybe yeah, Ian. Uh so Elian's gonna speak with Sylvain yes. first, and then Addison has offered to accompany you. Um what where would Sylvain like to head next he and addison would head towards the main floor lounge like see like what's like who's change of scenery like Mm -hmm. maybe a different group of people but okay and dear I think Dier is probably doing a bit of a later action this beat. So he might start out going to get another drink, maybe something warm, mulled wine. But then I think he is going to notice that Sylvain and his sister have peeled off to talk and perhaps try to interrupt them after a little while. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I think the order will resolve this in will be Elian, Dier, Lucius, Sylvain. And then Jenna can either go first or last because she's kind of doing her own thing. Maybe first. Uh, I don't mean to okay. go first, but yeah, th- yeah. those oh, are you went first last time. And there's been a, there's been a while since yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. went. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not, yeah. So. Okay. So let's start with Jenna then, who is... Okay. Going after um, Lady Urbane and uh, her company. Um, so, with the help of some servants, you locate them in the second floor lounge. Ah, yeah. Um, where they are sharing a drink. Um, and you, as Jenna enters, she also sees there, set up in a corner, is a kind of it's like a fortune teller tent from a circuit, a little bit. Um, <laughs> nice. Okay. But it's but it's uh, drapes behind her in the corner and <laughs> yeah, it, it's like but it's 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 surprisingly big. Like it's kind of like wide, um, like very flowy. It's very good material, um, and so that's set up in the corner. You do also see. I don't think Jenna has been introduced to this person, but you see a. Uh, a woman with uh, dark hair speaking with Lady Urbane and Lord Solace, um, who is wearing kind of odd robes that kind of look like a costume a little bit. And again, has like kind of a number of metal rings and some earrings. And I'll let Jenna make a wits roll. Okay, Okay, so just to be clear, it's uh, Tenille, Solace, and... uh... I- Iris. But yeah. Jenna doesn't know that. The fortune teller and, and Loris. Loris yeah. is there. And well. Loris. Okay. And then there's there's some servants as well. Sure, like, sure, sure. Attending sure, sure. on them. So what difficulty do you want, Matt? I'm just trying to think. Let's do this. Uh, how well would Jenna know this thing? <laughs> well, so um, here, here, here's what I'm thinking about traits, Matt. Let's let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I feel like talking with Tennille, because Tennille is the sister of Julian's mom. Yes. 
Dude, so I think this is directly related to Jenna's drive of finding what happened to uh, Julian. Okay, so this wits check is not related to that. Okay, what this about... Okay. see if you notice something um, when you enter. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay, okay. I then, then th I don't think my traits apply, Matt. That's that's acceptable. Yeah, to me. I think it's just a wits, and okay. I'm debating between two or three. Okay, I'm just trying to decide how hard this is actually to <laughs> recognize. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at a two. I okay. feel like Jenna. Yeah, you'll you'll see why. Okay, okay. cool. <laughs> four one. Four, four one. Has, four, you don't. Four, you have any nudges? I literally haven't rolled today. I think oh. I rolled twice yesterday. <laughs> oh wow! I, there was Good no job, rolls. Jenna. I need yeah. to roll more to get nudges. I <laughs> yeah. think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you you have. Would you like to uh, nudge your failure, or would you? Like yes, to absolutely. Okay. So nudge the failure doesn't turn it into success. I know. Yeah. But sure. it. Um. So yeah, you just Kidding notice me. that. Iris is is dressed kind of eccentrically. Um sure. like like it, it's very flattering on her. Like it's not ugly, but it's eccentric. Um and yeah, with the rings of like different metals, she's kind of mixing, like almost going for like a terrace mystic vibe, but like that doesn't match. She's not wearing terrace robes and she's obviously not terrace. Because didn't you say so, it's like kind of like obligator robes almost? Yeah, like so. And what I was meaning by that is like the yeah, like obligator robes, like the terrace robes are very distinctive because they have these V patterns yeah. that are usually in house colors. Um, so she's not wearing that and she doesn't have multiple terrace earrings. Um, she has multiple rings, but she just has one set of uh, earrings sure. that are clearly metal, uh, kind of strange looking pendant. So. It, it seems like kind of costumey, but very well made. And it obvious it, it is obvious like she actually does wear this. So she just seems kind of like an odd individual. So I will say that's what Jenna notices on cool. her nudged failure. Jenna goes to approach uh, the table and says, uh, pardon my intrusion. Might I join the lords and ladies of great houses here? And Solace turns around. And from your last conversation, you can tell that he's had a couple. Um, he, he's getting some red <laughs> in, in his face. Um, and he's still very, like, controlled and, like, uh, or not controlled is the wrong word. He's still, he's someone who can handle his drinks. So it's not like he's, like, sloppy. You can just tell he's, like, having a good time. Sure. Um, so he turns to you and says, ah, niece, Jenna, yes, of course, uh, the average age for this gathering is uh, terribly high. Um, and I always appreciate a time to speak with you younger folk. Uh, please uh, join us. I sometimes feel that I hang around people perhaps whose average age is too low. So I would love to <laughs> average things out. How about... How's Tanil doing on the drunkenness scale here? She's had a couple as well. You when you you've been around Tanil before and you yeah. know she has that kind of like nervous energy. True. And you can see that she's like started to relax a little bit. And as you were walking in, it sounded like not a serious conversation. Like there was some laughter and uh so it sounds like they're um having yeah, fun. fun. So what I want to do is I want to try and chat with a uh, lady or Bane in private, but that's going to be very hard to peel her off from Solace. I think you can always try. I can always try. Like I, I did say I need to roll more. So Jenna's already greeted Solace. Uh, Jenna, you know, greets Loras, uh, Loras Tenebrian with customary courtesy, uh, considering he's the consort of a great lord. Unofficially. Yeah. 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 yeah but, Jenna yeah. knows. Everyone knows. Yeah. Jenna then greets uh, Tanil. Lady Urbane, uh, my apologies that I hadn't gotten to greet you earlier uh, today. Ah, that's I. That's fine. I. There's um, you know, so many 
<laughs> it's just greetings, greetings, greetings all day Indeed. sometimes. <laughs> um, and we don't know each other that well. So only in business, I wouldn't I'm afraid. really expect you to greet me. I'm uh, you're, you are a you are a lady and head of a great house, which is precisely my destiny. Uh, so I though though perhaps we do not talk much. It is always good to see a woman in charge of a great house, I would say. And perhaps it is a shame that we have not talked more. Well, I wouldn't say it's good. It's downright awful. And if I were you, I'd get married as soon as possible into another house <laughs> because this is a death sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Urbane, you... Uh, Lady Urbane, you must be well aware i've had no less than three assassination attempts on my life believe me i know think about what you're doing wrong and stop doing it because <laughs> once you get stuck in this position they will not stop everyone wants to kill me i have to talk to people and they just come up to me and i'm thinking what does this person want from me and that happens for all nobles. Once you have a certain amount of wealth, the only reason people come up to you is because they want something from you. And the only relief is being around other people, and she kind of gestures to Solace, um, who have money and understand money and have their own money influence power. And because they at least don't need anything from you. But everyone else is just picking their little fingers and flattering and trying to get to you. And if you don't give you what they want, they they try to kill you. So this is a, a bloody, awful dominance city. And I'm sorry, my dear, but your although your aspirations and ambition might be admir admirable to some, this path is only going to lead you to misery. I appreciate the advice, uh, Lady Tenille, if I may refer to you as such. Uh, of course. I tried to marry a suitable match. Uh, I know it is perhaps not what people wanted from me, uh, as uh, my late fiancé, uh, your, your nephew, I believe, uh, Julian Lunarsh, um, yes, oh, such a sweet boy. I agree. I agree. He didn't uh, deserve I... what happened to him. You know, his. If I was his mother, I would have taken better care, and I would have told him, "Don't get mixed up with all that nonsense." But what nonsense? My sister be? had many traits, but attentive mother was not one of them. Uh, I. I, I... I must inquire, what would you prefer Julian to not get involved in? Are you referring to great house politics? Well, your lot, darling. Okay. I And no offense, but hmm. you are all sharks. And <laughs> Julian likes to think, this is what I'm talking about. I love Everyone her. is yes, out to right. kill best. everyone. And... Julian, bless his heart, was a bright boy, talented, but he just didn't know where to cut off his ambitions. He shot too high and it got him killed. And that's what happens. And I don't blame you personally. You can't help it what you are. No more than I can help what I am. We're the same. But all we can do is defend ourselves and get the little people around us killed. Lady Tenille. Dang. Mm -hmm. Julian was an extremely bright, savvy person. Yes, and ambitious, he was. yes. Uh, and those are traits I loved deeply in him. And I, I do find it a bit worrisome that you would... I, I suppose it is understandable, Lady Tenille. But one cannot just be kept in 
a glass box. Uh, people must grow uh, and people are allowed to make their own choices and own mistakes. Uh, and though I very much appreciate your experience, the only person I could marry would be someone who would not have me lose my title. Losing that would be unacceptable to me. And Julian was a good match, uh, and he is dead. And so I... Well, I, I hate to say it, dear, but some of us can't be too choosy about our prospects, so you should be careful about that. And, you know, what good has growth done for anyone, really? Lord I think Ruler I was certainly... happiest when I was a child. I think my life has gotten more miserable <laughs> every year. <laughs> you know that glass box? Maybe that's not too bad. You could put a nice cushion in there, a comfortable chair, have a little door for your servants to bring you things. Amazing. She's incredible. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad we're talking with her. This is so good. <laughs> um, the Lord Ruler certainly does prefer stasis as opposed to growth. But he does also, with the way his glorious kingdom has been created, does want him. He smirks when you say glorious. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Interesting. What? How, how close are you to Lady Olivine? Uh, how close was I? Was I? Uh, I... I'm afraid I am not privy to uh, this, shockingly. Uh, I mean, my sincere apologies for that. I usually no need try to, to apologize. Prepared. My sister um, met an unfortunate end due, her, due to her own uh, poor decisions. Um, she's the author of her own misfortune, as most of us are. And... Yeah, there's not much more to say about it than that. Um, what happened? It, it would be very useful to to know. Uh, I I am wrapped up in matters you probably wouldn't approve of. Yes, uh, I I I grant. Uh, and my apologies for that. And I I will take your advice under advisement. <laughs> I assure you. Uh, but um, the the tangled web is role. is constricting. Roll a charm. Ah, ah, mm. yes. Uh, all right. Um, and you I... can add, yeah. I'll say you can add manipulative. Yeah, nice. Ooh, nice. Uh, to see if you've maneuvered. Um, what, what about what, uh, what happened to my, fi uh, to my fiance? That, that does seem very relevant. Uh... Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you are this is about his mom it's relevant it's relevant he, okay I'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 uh what challenge that's your, that's are we? your tragedy correct um she doesn't want to tell you anything so i'm gonna say it's a four okay all right mm. I right. find Neil very relatable. I don't want to tell. <laughs> it's true. She is very either. relatable. Absolutely. She's pretty okay, great. Jenna. Let's go. Uh, all right. So four plus two. So six dies. Challenge four. Nice. Oh, twos and ones. Garbage. So sorry. Garbage. Four twos. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I I love getting tons of matching dice that aren't the ones you want. That, that's my favorite part. Of <laughs> that, that is a fun part of the system. Yeah. Um, Tanil will kind of look you up and down and just say, well, I wouldn't be doing a very good job as house head if I was just blabbing about all our every little scandal to others um it's it's a private matter no need to concern yourself but come now i know your house is in bed with the ministry i'm sure you could figure out mm. what happened if you put your mind to it mm. Indeed. solace now i'm sad <laughs> I, and how, how about we get another glass of wine and Saul says, uh, yes, um, that, that might be good. 
my my apologies for uh bringing down the mood uh it, it oh don't it, apologize it, i'm good at bringing down the mood on my own <laughs> as, as, as am i as, as am kind of i giggles and he says yes she really is and him and laura <laughs> throughout this have kind of been exchanging gans- glances you get the sense they like hanging out with tenille because they find her very entertaining <laughs> i understand <laughs> I mean, yeah absolutely she gives <laughs> no craps about anything <laughs> God, I do not think there's any way I'm going to be able to get anything out of Tennille. She, But it, it's pretty clear that the ministry totally murdered uh, Olivine, I think. I think that is Executed. very Executed. 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 Sorry. <laughs> dealt with. She dealt, dealt, dealt with. with. Yes. Yeah. Dealt with. That would yeah. be Resolved. consistent with what you know from... Yeah. What you were able to know from Lady Urbane and what you learned from Preline Ver- Verity. Indeed. Earlier. That would be Indeed. a logical conclusion. Um, well, I will stay and make pleasantries with uh, the lords. Um, and eventually I will apologize as I have other matters to attend to. And I simply apologize for bringing down the mood a bit as the manor makes me think of well, Julian. And uh, so sincere apologies about that. Uh, Solace will say um, my condolences, of course, for your loss, Jenna. It's awful to lose someone you're close with. Um, and you can see he really seems to mean that. Um, and probably thinking about, you know, his, his mother and his younger brother. Um, absolutely but, uncle i i completely agree if you, and he says but d- pay no mind and no um apology is necessary we're having a rollicking good time <laughs> i'm i am glad lord solace and i appreciate the 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 many fireplaces so we might keep warm in this yes dreadful weather yes dreadful um as and, you're going to leave though yes. um Iris will oh, no. say, um, <laughs> "Oh no! Uh, forgive my intrusion, uh, Lady Jenna, but uh, might you want a reading? My uh, services have not been required much of late, and I I brought all my the tools of my craft. Again, we don't have a lot of details as what the ministry's religion is actually like." Like, there's not very many fortune tellers, so is there, like, no. a... It, would this be considered taboo, or just, like, if this um, is a curiosity, who cares? Type this thing. is a curiosity. It's a, maybe, like, a little risque. Ministry doctrine is very concerned with one correct interpretation of prophecy. Um, so the idea of other people claiming to know the future or divine things does somewhat run counter to the idea that the Lord Ruler is the source of all things true, right? Um, kind of how, like, religious people might look at fortune tellers. Sure. In our world, like, it's not like they're being, like, hunted or burned at the stake or it's, like, a crime. But, yeah, like, you might see it as, like, a a false superstition um, that isn't, like, in keeping you with your religion. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Great, thank you. So, it, so like, it would be in character for Jenna. Don't feel obligated because I'm offering this to accept it. Like, it would sure. be in character for Jenna to turn this. Uh, Jenna down. is going to laugh uh, and look at uh, Solus and Loras and just be like, "What?" And Jenna says, "Sure." Like in the most patronizing uh, mm. way. It's like, sure, why not? Uh, and you are? Um, Lady um, Iris Gray, though the lady is a, a courtesy. I'm, I'm not of, um, I have noble blood, but I'm not of noble birth. Um, yes, I'm not familiar with that house. No. I'm here only on the good graces of our our hosts um, and my and the generosity of of Lady Urbane. Um, mm. I know many treat 
my talents with skepticism. Um, Indeed. But uh, I think even if you don't believe in forces in our world that we don't understand, going through the motions can be a useful time of self-reflection, and you can learn a surprising amount. I would imagine this is part of the entertainment that Lord Solas wished to provide, and it would be rude of me to to not take part, and maybe you'll get a genuine chuckle out of me uh, and entertain me. If, if I acquire a chuckle, I'll consider my, to have succeeded. Thank you for mm. your indulgence, Lady Jenna. Mm. Mm. Please traumatize her instead. I, I am. Look, <laughs> uh, as a player character, it's like, no, no, no. Matt put this totally world hopper here. And it's like, this yeah. is the first person we had yeah. to interact with this. Yeah. So it's like, to. I have to go with like the this idiot like whatever <laughs> uh, I, I am the deepest skeptic uh like i okay sure hilarious <laughs> um so i think we'll cut back to that because we've had a bit of a, a yeah absolutely already yeah. Fun. let's go to elian who is yes. trying to get um so addison has stepped aside um mm. to give you and sylvain a little bit of uh privacy um, so that you can speak briefly. And I mean, like I said before, it depends on how full the room is if, and how obvious it is that they're going to be talking uh, without mm-hmm. anyone so else there. You can play this two different ways, right? There's mm-hmm. a security in the atrium because there are onlookers that although they will see you speaking, they will also see yeah. that you are only speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, you could try to sneak off somewhere. Yeah. That's but if someone noticed problem. you that so yeah it depends like are you trying to avoid notice entirely or are you okay with being noticed um and you just want to keep your words private yeah i think she would want to like keep her words private but is okay with being noticed because she knows how rumors work mm-hmm. and like if nobody else can hear them this would be the safer option and I presume, like, Addison is keeping an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah. Addison, is, I think, mm. is standing uh, to the side and she's kind of watching the crowd mm. to see if you guys have privacy. Mm-hmm. Um, Sylvain, I don't know if you've heard, but there seem to be rumors going around. Uh, about what? Mm. <laughs> There's no chance to lay my pick up on this at all. No, like he, he doesn't know. Um, I noticed myself earlier, and Addison confirmed that there are some people that seem to think there's something going on between us. It. Sylvain just laughs like, oh, <laughs> obviously that isn't true. Yeah, we both know that. But uh, Lucius's reaction earlier, when we were talking with the group, when we came down my brother, mm-hmm, that I I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one who started love rumors. Um, mm-hmm. I was wondering if what we want to do with this because. Squashing them too obviously could just seem like the deny the kind of denial that confirms things somewhat like the whole Kenton Hot Angelique Bubida situation where they are inc- <laughs> denying it everywhere they go, but everyone knows there's something going on there. Mm-hmm. So that would but there be good. actually is something going on there. Oh my god. This is uh mm-hmm. precious. Yeah, but people yeah. <laughs> That's the word. Um people could see that as confirmation. But I also wouldn't want this to get around too obviously. 
Yeah. Addison knows there's nothing going on, and she has offered to help uh, squash the rumors if we want to. I would trust her judgment. I think and, as long as we're not mm-hmm. found cavorting, <laughs> fraternizing. Uh, I was gonna say canoodling. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fraternizing. That's too fancy a word for canoodling. <laughs> sounds just like what Sylvain would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, like as long as we're not found canoodling. I don't. There, we won't give fuel to the, these rumors. I agree, and with Addison uh, helping out. Mm-hmm. It won't. It will help give it some distance, that, rather than us denying it. I was wondering, just changing topic a, a little, since mm-hmm. you seem to know Addison better than I do. Um, when I was looking for my invitation, I saw a note come out of my brother's that seems to indicate a meetup between him and Mavis. And I was wondering if Addison might know anything about that. You might be able to. What what did the note say? Not much. Only they were going to meet up. But I do know, and I won't confirm my sources, that Mavis has apparently been meeting up with informants. If anyone knows about this, it would be Addison. To find out what this is about, I would appreciate it. I am curious to see why my brother would be meeting up with Mavis of all people. Since they don't seem to be particularly close, especially lately. And this part Not has done lately. nothing but confirm that. Sylvain looks not troubled, but like he's thinking about things and it's difficult but like not like a little distracted but not in like a bad way like he's just mulling through what you've said but he does not volunteer more at this point i'll talk with addison about putting these rumors to bed thank you Yes, I I definitely think that's the best strategy. And then Sylvain will go off with Addison. Okay. Um, At any point during that, does Deer interject? Because I know Deer was (laughs) hoping to. Oh, I think he might. Uh, Yeah, I I, I think he goes and gets his his drink. Near the end of that conversation, as mm-hmm. Eliane and Sylvain mm-hmm. are about to go their separate ways, um, mm-hmm. Deer can walk up. Um, and I will say, as Deer walks up, Addison coughs loudly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I know. Nice. Wonderful. <laughs> to warn that they have been noticed. Um, mm-hmm. I have a feeling between the two of them, like Elion might be the one who has is facing the room to keep an eye on things, and maybe Sylvain is not. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, does does Elion do anything as her her brother seems to be approaching? She doesn't want to just immediately scurry off because she knows that will be suspicious. But mm-hmm. the moment Dia gets close enough to like be in your shot and like talk to them. Like, brother dear, I am afraid I have to go. Um, I have a meeting, but I doubt you'll be interested in talking to Sylvain and Addison here. Um, but you also say something about the way he hardly seems to associate with people he, he mm. deems uh beneath their station, and how unusual this is for him. But sarcastically, maybe implying. Okay, he's followed a few places. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase that though. Sure. That, yeah, I think I think that works. Um, yeah, you you can just give a gist if you're not yeah. doing the exact okay. words. That's fine. Yeah, I think that works. Well, you know, there are always those who seem to 
require reminders of their places every so often. Uh, enjoy this little meeting of yours, I suppose, but uh, recall that you are here representing venture interests, sister. How could I ever forget? Hmm. See that you don't. <laughs> and uh, he'll, he'll let her scurry away. And yeah, they'll just fix walk off. his eyes on Sylvain. Annoying. Annoyed at the air, but <laughs> not showing it. Mm -hmm. And I would say if Addison is nearby, he might s send a little glance her way as well. But um, just sort of keeping an eye on whatever she's up to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think he, he fixes Sylvain with a little bit of a glare and says... Master Hadriel, you wouldn't happen to be courting my sister, would you? <laughs> Dreadful rumor <laughs> circulating, it just, turns out. Just super direct. Love it. I like... Sylvain, like, stands, like, very straight, like, being... <laughs> I think Sylvain's taller than D'Air, right? Sylvain yeah. is taller than D'Air, and is... <laughs> Taking advantage of that fact of just, and he does not like the air at all. <laughs> so, people yeah, do. It is a rather unfortunate rumor. That's, I, she is like a sister. <laughs> I have no interest in her that way. Is she now? An interesting thing to say <laughs> to her brother. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Not so unusual, I think. She is rather... I can see why she had to seek elsewhere for such a relationship. <laughs> oh! <laughs> um... I think something in Dear sharpens <laughs> mm -hmm. when Sylvain says this. Uh, and there 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 is a an almost a sense of threat from his his mm -hmm. presence right now. Of like he might not be as tall as Sylvain, but he can definitely take on a dangerous air when he needs to. Mm -hmm. And just very fixedly says you would consider yourself very close with her then. Would you say she she trusts you? Do you talk often about certain things that might have happened? Share secrets, perhaps. And he is watching Sylvain's reaction very yeah. carefully. <laughs> Delicious. Go. This what is a himbo so say. tense. <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid. Sylvain is going to play this off as like. Is Sylvain going to try to let on he knows something, or is he going to try to conceal that he knows something? He's going to try and conceal that he knows something. Um, I think it because my sense mm -hmm. is that Deer is angling to try to test how much Sylvain possibly knows. Is oh, that yeah. accurate? Mm -hmm. So I think okay. that's a contest then of Deer's wits and Sylvain's charm. Oh, Ooh, Sylvain's okay. charm. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> right, you were gonna say wits. <laughs> no. um, and, 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 like, he'd, he'd frame it as, like, like, they talk and, like, like they shared some personal conversations but not but not anything to that degree without implying that there is something to that degree like uh, like he might say like like she seems troubled lately but he wouldn't say so deer's wits versus sylvain's charm yeah and i'll say sylvain i'll let you add Big himbo energy. I was gonna <laughs> big himbo energy as like the obfuscation. I of... think yeah, it'll make Deer feel that like, oh yeah, this guy doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. He's just like a dummy. He's not smart enough to lie to yeah. me, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then oh, do you have something would... you want to suggest? 
I would like to make a case for Dier's drive to shore up loose ends. Yeah, absolutely. And since he's kind of being threatening in this, uh, could I pull on his specialty of getting his hands dirty? See, this rule... um, Although it's this is more the insight. Yeah, however, you are also, I think, trying to use that to unnerve Sylvain to make him easier to read. So I think in that way, cool. I've convinced myself you can add both of those. Um, Sylvain, (laughs) is there anything else you want to add? Can I make a case for duelist of like, like this is an of like he has experience like being in conflict with someone and like maintaining like composure. Like, not, like, getting lost in, like, the heat of the moment. Mm. I will add add something for the intersection, the resonance, maybe, of (laughs) showmanship and duelist. (laughs) Okay. Because you have both of those traits, I feel like, could be fringe, but neither of them are quite on point. But since you have both of them, I'll let you add. Something between the two. Yeah. So Uh, I'll... Yeah. So I'll roll to set the difficulty. Um, for, so that's five plus two. Mm. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. is, I'm going to spend those three nudges to bump it to a five. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. Deer, Deer's got six dice. So yeah. it's doable. Doable. All right. We'll give it a shot. Oh. Wars and one nudge. Do you How's have any banked bend? nudges? I have one banked nudge, so oh. I can't push it up. <laughs> Just would, one. Would you, you like to bank, bank it one nudge, or would you like to use it? Mm-hmm. I think. I think I'm going to bank it because i think regardless of like what dear reads from sylvain he's going to remain potentially suspicious so i don't i don't think it's worth nudging that failure yeah so yeah sylvain you're you're pretty convinced then that sylvain doesn't know anything you kind of get the sense that sense that he's a big innocent dummy and that uh Mm -hmm. how cute that Elian thinks like this could be an ally um <laughs> like if this is the sorts of people she hangs out with like you hang out with like interesting dangerous competent people um and she's approaching like <laughs> this guy <laughs> <laughs> and you know, ain't no snitch yeah and you're, you're dismissive <laughs> of Eliane, but you also like you have a grudging respect, I think, for her intelligence. Would I be, or like, not respect, but you? I I think he's starting to realize that she is more troublesome than he initially yeah. than he initially thought. This little yeah. scheme that she went around him to get to the party was yeah. a little more clever than he perhaps expected she was going to be. Yeah. Like he thought he burns the invitation, she's done. But uh, so, yeah, he's he's a little worried about how meddlesome she is. So these days. I think Sylvain's response is enough to tell Dier that you're still worried about Eliane, but maybe your energies in curbing her are best spent elsewhere. Um, not that you're not like you said, you can still be suspicious of Sylvain, but um mm-hmm. Depending on what else Deer learns about Elian's activities, mm-hmm. this might not be your like primary concern. Like, yeah, Sylvain would probably end the conversation of like, is there something going on with her I should know about? Hmm. You know, my sister has a very fanciful imagination, I would say, and. <laughs> You know, were she ever to come up with any ridiculous stories that she were to try to pass along to you, it might be be in your best interest to keep such things to yourself. Of course. Mm. Lord dear. Good. 
Thank you. Oh, maybe pass such a message along to Tenebrian as well. She seems to have a habit of being places she's not wanted. Mm-hmm. And then she'll uh, stalk away. <laughs> He's done. He's sick of talking to these lower class people. The worst. El- I'm, I, I think I just missed it. Like, Elian just stepped away on her own from that exchange yeah. with Sylvain, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. as we move to the her. next scene, what I'll say is, as you're moving away from them, Elian, um, that's when mm-hmm. Ken and Rianne will approach you, but we'll start right. with yes. Lucius yes. Um, and the events leading to that point. Um, if, if Sylvain and um, Dier are done. I think, I think Dier's satisfied. Okay. With that, and it's sort and, of a if Elion says anything in the future, mm-hmm. Sylvain will know to keep his mouth shut. Hopefully, and and Ian, if you're okay with it, mm-hmm. I think based on the length of that, those two conversations, mm-hmm. that might have taken up Sylvain's beat. Or would I you... am okay with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. If if you're Anxious about fitting another conversation with Addison in, let me know. But um, mm-hmm. I also just we'll see how like the next the clock okay. yeah. beat goes. I guess this will mm-hmm. yeah move us on to the evening. Um, what I might allow is mm-hmm. if anyone has a beat that's not like a conversation, but is just like a role to like get information. I would allow like a quick um, beat to that. I, but I have wouldn't... a lightning round thing. So okay, so we'll do. Once we finish with mm-hmm. Lucius and then I'll resolve Jenna with the fortune cool. teller, That's then we'll do a lightning round of just yep. if you want to make a roll for something. Yeah, I'll yeah, let you do I that think, before you move on. Uh, I don't know if the Kent and Angelique thing can be a roll of. Yeah, if, that, if that can be a roll. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Lucius. Yes. Uh, so you, you're you exploring with uh, Penn and Rianne. You head to the solar first where you see some acrobat dancer performers. Yeah. Um, they don't interest the, me too much. Um, okay. so I move on to the library. There's uh, nothing in the library. It seems this has been set aside as just a private. Space. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make myself a drink. I assume there's there's drinks in the library, or I'm gonna get there's, myself. A drink. Yeah. There's kind of like servants passing around. So okay. either by stepping into the hall or to another room, quick, you can you can get drinks. I'll yeah. grab a drink and then I'll head into the lounge. I don't think there's anything in the main floor lounge either. So this Ugh. is another I go um, off and and head back into the solar and okay. sit down at a chair table. Motion Pen and Rianne to sit and be like. Oh, actually, first, when as they sit down, I want to use my family ability. Use my locale family um ability to tell if people are scar or nobles. Um and tell if the the performers are scar or nobles. Okay. Yep. Um, the power and they, of yeah. So <laughs> roll the what? What difficulty is that power? That's the level three difficulty one. Um, level three. Okay. Yep. And then does so, that spend yeah, the can... house point as well? I believe. It um. Does. I no. I wouldn't make you spend for this. Cool. I, I don't think this is information you're intending to use. It's just kind of your curiosity. I'm just curious, yes. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I rolled a three, so I, I succeeded. Okay. So let me look up the performers. I'm going to say you you look at their clothing and their appearance. Um, and th- so the reason why, like, Lakal employs a lot of ska. Like, yes. because they are, they do agriculture, they have a lot of plantations. So they're one of the, like, bigger ska um, owners um, out of the great houses. And uh, so you you know ska pretty well, and you have ideas about uh, what a noble <laughs> uh, looks like and, and should be. And so I'd say in your study of them... You get the vibes that they're likely here because of their talent and their skill and that they have a very unique um, high level skill set, 
which is something Ska can use to climb above okay. their station. They're like that middle um, class between where like the, the, the tradesmen are and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah you get the sense that since they're probably of Ska blood, but they're very, very good at what they do. Okay. And so that's why um, they are Lucius, entertaining at this yeah. party. Uh, Lucius comes to this conclusion and rolls his eyes and looks away from them. Um, and yeah. speaks to Pen and Rianne and just kind mm -hmm. of, so, what do you guys have for me? Pen and Rianne kind of uh, share a glance, like they're deciding whether to play hard to get or wh <laughs> whether to just give in and, and dish. Um, and after a moment of uh, conferring, uh, Pen takes the lead and he says, well, <clears throat> I don't know, cousin. Sometimes this relationship feels a little one-sided. I don't suppose, and we've already oh. shared a very juicy tidbit with you um, on your arrival. So mm. we saw you speaking with uh, Mavis Lariel and Genetechiel and Dear Venture earlier. Um, mm. Have you learned anything interesting <sighs> from those interesting companions? I wouldn't say anything too interesting. I did witness Mavis and Felix having a slight spat over, over one of the servants, and I'm sure so you saw- Delarial siblings are always so <sighs> messy. They... I mean, Felix seems to try to keep his nose clean for the most part, but you know his brother was- Mm, I mean, that a mess and uh, Mavis. Well, you you know the kind. Like Mavis, just she's a party girl. Like <sighs> she was, she was a party girl. This I've barely seen her this evening. Um, and but and that's not to yeah. say we don't like to party. Like Rianne kind of interjects. He's like, <laughs> we like to have fun. Mm -hmm. But there's a way to. Go about it discreetly so one yes. doesn't develop a <laughs> reputation. Yes, I agree, I agree. And and as I said, this that's not the only instance I've seen of Mavis um acting not what I would say uh as as noble as I'd expect. I'm sure you saw the business with the with the uh, the creature at the front door earlier tonight. No, we mm. we didn't. Um, yes. Oh, oh, oh! Well, you wanted juicy. Um, some a woman turned up at the front door, was trying to get in, dressed basically in a sack. Um, and Mavis went over and let the let the thing. Stay in the stables. Like I think she's there now <laughs> with the storm and everything. Yeah, I, Rianne kind of develops a like conversational tone, <laughs> and she's like, I "Don't think Mavis might have hired her, do you?" Oh, what to try and seem sympathetic towards? Um, no. Well, I I, I just can't speak to Mavis's. Tastes, but some oh. noble women and Rianne kind of trails off. See, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't think Mavis would go that far. What an interesting thought. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, she hasn't been exactly around noble society as much. Maybe she's been lonely. She hasn't been in, in, Luthadel in nearly two years. Mm. Um, and Rianne, so, so that was Penn, and then Rianne will yeah. say, and she's been very close with that Addison Tenebrian, who is also rather lowborn. No, I'm I'm actually speaking of Addison. I think I might have a minor in there. I, I think I have. Would you guys, would you mind, Rianne, would you mind fetching mm. uh, Eliane Venture for me? I have uh, wow. some thoughts. Do some... we have a bit of fun planned? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, this party's been boring so far, it's, so it's why not? Just... Um, and <laughs> Rianne will go off to fetch Elian. Um, you, you've given them something juicy, so they're they're yeah. game for more fun. Um, yes. You don't need to roll. And then while she's gone, Penn will kind of make a comment to the fact is, you know, this idea about... 
Mavis, you mm -hmm. know, I can't help but think of her uncle. We know he has unique tastes. Um, it, it's possible. And, you know, L Loris isn't very well born either. So yes. See, I think it's so he's you yeah. can see this idea that Mavis has hired a a, a, a lady of the night. Yes. A courtesan. Yes. Um, uh, is taking root in pen, and this might be a rumor that he starts spreading about Mavis, if yes. left to his own devices. <laughs> I was gonna say, very quickly, who is Mavis's uncle? It's... Lord Ilariel. Okay, so Excellent. sorry. So if... Excellent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Excellent. So she's, he's who essentially saying... Has a that... Yeah, he also Yeah, he has a yes. same-sex partner yeah. who is noble, yeah. but yes. is of low birth. Yeah. So... Um, I will try and be like... Is, yeah. Be like, yeah. see, like I said, interesting idea, but I don't think that Mavis would be hiring uh, someone like that uh, to keep her company. I think. Do you uh, have personal knowledge of Lady Mavis's love life, uh, Lucius? Um, not enough to say at the moment, but I do know something's going on. And it's definitely, uh, and it's one of the reasons I'm getting Eliane in. Ooh. I don't think it's well, Eliane. this is going to be exciting. Mm, but I think um, Eliane may know more. So we'll cut to <laughs> Eliane and Rianne. Um, and so Rianne, Eliane will approach you and say, Eliane, darling, it's been too long. Um, <laughs> you have exchanged very few words to each other. Yeah, <laughs> entirely too familiar. And she could say, you know, funny thing, uh, I was just talking about you with my cousin Lucius, and um, we were wondering if you would join us in the solar, if, you, if you're not busy. Um, and she kind of casts her glance around. Um, Sylvain and... Dier went into another room, or are they still in the atrium? For their We're still in the atrium, I think. I don't oh, think no, we moved. She, she casts her gaze around and sees you guys talking in the corner, but she kind of mm -hmm. has a dismissive look at Sylvain and um, Dier as well. And she says, it doesn't look like you're overfed with company. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> The worst. <laughs> Everyone's the worst. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> yeah. The Hastings siblings are. They give some of you a run for their money. <laughs> so she's like, "Would you join us?" She's gonna be like, "Why in the world did you address me that way? We have barely crossed any words." But she also wants to go talk to Lucius. Lucius was on her list anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'll gesture. Um, is it Rianne or Pen? Rianne. Rianne. Yeah, so just uh, to Rianne, like, go ahead, and she'll follow, and she'll discreetly yeah. um, just replenish her bronze. Okay, make a physique roll to try to be <laughs> smooth. Because you're kind it of trying to sleight of hand it. Okay, no, and... my physique isn't that bad. I, okay. I thought it was okay. Um... Difficulty? Um, it'll be a contest against Rianne's wits to see if she any sneaky traits mm. notices. Ooh, yeah, well, very okay. nice. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Rianne doesn't have any traits that help her in this, so she'll just roll a straight wits roll. Ah, great. Wonderful. Threes. Okay. Yeah, I, so she, yeah, she doesn't notice. Um, I will say as a note, since I just rolled four dice um, for Rianne and got a three, um, people who know them know that Rianne is the more intelligent of the two okay. um, siblings. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Penn would kind of be known to have potentially low, lower uh, wits. <laughs> I mean, if he's interested in deer, like, that seems mm -hmm. obvious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Rianne will get kind of one last comment off before you enter the room. She'll say, oh, and don't worry about being alone with a couple men. 
I'll be there to like make so like no rumors will start. Um, you know, with and with the four of us, it, even though it's mixed company. Um, you know, I heard you had a little difficulty that with that with Sylvain earlier. So you know, um, it's uh, you really actually should be in keep in groups and mixed company, one woman to another. Um, if you want to protect your your reputation, um, but still, you know, interact with uh, you know other nobles. Uh, small groups is is best. <laughs> yeah, she will make note of that, but keep keep her composure and not acknowledge at all that comment about Sylvain okay. <laughs> because I, she she knows there's nothing going on there, and that Addison is gonna take care no. of. I, f- I feel like so, I've invited El- uh, Eliane to swim the sharks, but I'm also one of the sharks. So I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I, a shark. I, I, I do want the little yeah. fish here. Thanks. And, and El- Eliane, Eliane is a venture too. Um, she doesn't necessarily like act like it all the time, but... She is. Um, she is. So yeah, so the four of you are now in the solar watching Eliane. the uh, dancers. Eliane, how Sylvain... <sighs> <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> He's fine. I saw him talking to my brother earlier. Why do you ask? Oh no, no reviews. And I just think you seem you guys seem to be getting close. So I thought I just I thought I'd just inquire. How are you finding the party tonight? It's been interesting. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. I don't see you at many of these types of events. Um, how did you get invited? I, mean, I still am a venture. I think everyone has se- seemed to forget that lately. Hmm. You certainly did. You didn't call me by my name earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was just a little jest. That was a little fun game we play. Um... No, I just was wondering. I just, um, um, I'll just say, Penn and Rian are doing the champ, like the drink equivalent of munching their popcorn. <laughs> just like they're just, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're sipping. Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard you were close with Addison, correct? Um, I know her. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. How well do you know her? Not as well as Mavis does, but I we've, know we've been around her. Yeah, speaking of Mavis, how much do you know about Addison's relationship with Mavis? Not all that much as you may assume, since I know Addison. They seem to get along quite well and are frequently seen together. Yeah. But I've noticed I don't that know it's... if there's anything more to that. Okay. Penny Rianne, do you mind standing over there for a little bit? Not subtle. <laughs> I would roll... I think you're, what you're trying to do is make it seem like this is part of the joke, and that by standing over there, they're playing along. Yes. So roll uh, charm uh, to kind of... Hell yeah. ...convince them of that. And I'm gonna let them each roll wits. Okay. Um, and can I yeah. add social light um, yes. to that as well? Cool. So that's five dice. Uh, I'll roll as contest then. Yeah, contest. <sighs> Fours so and two fours nudges. And two nudges. And so I'm, Rianne, I, Rianne will roll. Yeah. Sorry. I was gonna say um, okay. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And Ken will roll. <laughs> <laughs> also nothing. Well, it's too nice. Um, yeah. as bricks. Also yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. He's as so. smart as Sylvain is. Yeah. <laughs> so I assume they they get up and and yeah, they, they yeah. get up and they 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 cast like little glances. Um, yeah. uh, as they're going, Pen will say, "Okay, cousin, but don't do anything naughty while we're not." Oh, well, you guys. <laughs> Stay, you stay in the room. You can keep an eye yeah. on us. Uh, so they'll go to the other side of the performers, uh, <laughs> but they'll they're like still sipping their tea, like yeah, watching you. Not uh, their tea, but yeah. yeah. Um, Eliane, 
Am I correct in thinking we have a new seeker among the nobility? I assumed you'd noticed mm. earlier. It is possible not to. Yeah, you weren't. You were burning at the time. You weren't too discreet, were you? As you said, it's pretty new. Okay. So. This is one of those things where it's it's advantageous to have it known publicly, as I've used. But it's also something that's advantageous to keep on the down low. And so, if we can keep that little secret, I'm wondering if you could help me with another. How well do you know your uncle, Straff? <laughs> <laughs> If you'd been asking me about my aunt, I would have said well, but oh, Strap is not a particularly sociable person. Mm. Real, real quick, cousin, cousin Straff, cousin, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. sorry. Cousin. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought uncle. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I forget too. Yes. Oh. A reminder that the, yeah, this is ten years before. So Straff, well, older than you, is not old enough to be an uncle. Uh, an uncle. Sorry, yeah. okay. Okay, um, so when you say, um, oh, you mean Shredis then? Okay. Yes. Mm. Interesting. No, I was just wondering, as we're talking about uh, people's relationships with Mavis, um, I was wondering if you'd heard anything from your side regarding um, the two of them. Mavis and Straff? Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I'm, was not where I was expecting. <laughs> I am like trying to carve Veronica's secrets out of her. <laughs> You've asked the wrong sibling about that. I secret. know, but I'm not going to ask <laughs> Dia for secrets. <laughs> doesn't know anything. He doesn't I'm know sure. anything. I didn't know they had much of a relationship. Okay. But I don't know either. There are always secrets. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you, Eliane. This has been an informative discussion. <laughs> How the hell does Lucius know about that? Because <laughs> I know, um, I know, I have eight secrets, and I haven't what? used any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought only Deer got that one. Hmm. Are you? Do you general. know the same thing though, or mm -hmm. is it overlapping? I'm wondering. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eliane. This has been this has been informative. Um. Um, if I may ask you something, since I'm doing this for you, do you? Have any recommendations? Or is it just a matter of practice? Uh, on the seeking. Um, have you have you got any um, bronze in you at the moment? Okay. Do you want to try burning that and tell me what you feel? Uh, do I need to roll or just yeah. start burning? Yeah, uh, roll. Uh, That's yeah. five, right? Yeah. Difficulty one, I guess. Uh, yeah, like you're just burning. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> okay. Um, okay. So you... Unless Lucius is burning as well, you do not detect any allomancers in your immediate. I'm not uh, burning vicinity. anything. Okay, so you you don't. Um, you might sense, I'd say, some very like. Actually, no. Yeah, you wouldn't detect anything. Okay. I was trying to give you something because <laughs> of the five, but <laughs> there's just nothing there. There's nothing yeah. There. I mean, there are people off in the party, and she'll. Be able mm -hmm. to feel that there are people mm -hmm. over there. Um, I'm not getting anything at the moment in mm. the immediate vicinity. There are elementers. 
off in the rest of the manor. I was going to say, you're not getting anything because I'm not burning anything. Um, if you want me to help you with being a seeker, then you need to bring me better than what you've just told me, which is a whole lot of nothing. Um, so if you want to run off to your friend Addison, I'd like to know more about her relationship with Mavis. And if you could bring me that, I may consider keeping this, our little secret between us and maybe helping you out a little bit. How about that? I will see what I can find. I cannot promise anything. No worries. I can't promise anything either. Thank you, Eliane. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. He sucks. So, (laughs) we'll conclude that beat there. Um, Very quickly. I was going to say, oh, I call yeah. I call Penn and Rihanna over and I just say, okay, she's a ahead. bore who knows nothing. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fun watching her skirt squirm. Yes, it's it's just... <laughs> uh, not really? really? I don't, I don't know why... Now. I don't know why Venture lets her go out in public. I thing. know. Oh, I'll have to tell Dia about this later. <laughs> oh please let us be there when you tell him oh, no, I can't no, wait to see the look on his face <laughs> um, no no and then yeah so, okay. so yeah we'll, we'll end that beat there so hi everyone it's Matt here coming to you from the heat of summer several months after recording the episode went long so we're gonna just go ahead and cut things there um and save the rest of the excitement for the next episode of diceborn secrets in stained glass thanks to everyone for watching the first two episodes though that's great you can find us at 17thshard.com for all your news theories discussion and fun and everything else related to brandon sanderson You can find us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Spotify. If you like our stuff, you can support us on Patreon or by leaving a YouTube super comment. I hope you all are enjoying the show, but hang on to your champagne flutes because there might be some darker waters ahead. Bye. Diceborn Secrets in Stained Glass is a production of the 17th Shard set in the Mistborn setting by Brandon Sanderson. It uses the Mistborn Adventure Game rule set developed by Crafty Games, including a homebrew adaptation of playtest material from their upcoming nobility supplement, The Golden Mandate. Our story features performances by Ben as Lucius Lacall, Ian as Sylvain Hadriel, Alex as Dear Venture, Veronica as Elian Venture, and Eric as Jenna Techiel. Backgrounds and overlays were designed by Connor Chamberlain, with character portraits by Ellie Scarter. We also need to give a special shout out to Marvin for his work on the other animations. And lastly, our eternal thanks to Alex for her heroic efforts in editing and post-production. So thank you for joining us, brace a glass, and we'll race you to the bottom. <laughs>